Bruins secondary. And great instincts by Chad Davis. You can't really coach this kind of an effort. Either you have the instincts to do this or not. Watch Edwards coming, number 23. Davis just ducks underneath him. Goes out and picks up the first down. That's a heck of a play, and you need your quarterback to be instinctive. Donnie Edwards, had he stayed low, would have had his fifth sack of this 94 season. It's a first down. The ball spotted just short of the 45-yard line. Kevin Hicks now in it, running back behind Davis. That's Hicks, and boy, is he wrapped up and driven backwards. Hicks, the senior from right here in Los Angeles, is hit and dropped by Saleh Isaiah. Isaiah did a great job of stepping up in the hole to meet that counter tray, that trap where Washington State pulled two linemen to get in front of Isaiah. Isaiah took him on and then stuffed the play right there and made the play on Hicks. They'll call it a yard. The ball is now just across the 45, just underway from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. 13-21 to play in the first quarter. territory at the 48 where he is stopped Madhu the junior from San Francisco Abdul McCullough made the tackle on that play a little bit of an option from Washington State they're doing a little bit of everything throwing the short pass spreading UCLA out getting wide receivers all over the field you'll see three receivers on one side one to the other side and that's an attempt to kind of loosen things up Mike Price likes to have a wide open offense
seen. Second down, eight seven. The ball is at the 35 yard line. Stokes back in the ball game. He is wide to the left from the shotgun. Cook looking his way over the middle. It goes intended for Stokes. He's hit. Can't get to it. Ray Jackson providing the stick on JJ Stokes. Washington State defensively, and boy, what a defensive team this is. Dwayne Patterson, he had an all-world game a year ago against the Bruins. Ron Childs is the weak side linebacker, always wanted to be a Cougar. And Torrey Hunter is the senior corner from Tacoma Curtis High School. Third and seven. Flags everywhere. Quick push down to the right, will throw, and it's incomplete. Don Sasa, Samoan from Long Beach, is the one who chased Cook out. There were a couple of Cougars moving, Rod, and you wonder if maybe Mike Flanagan, the center, moved the football. Well, either that or you've got Wayne Cook with his cadence drawing them off sides. Well, if it's off sides against the Cougars, two or three Cougars saw something. <laughs> or heard something. Or heard something. So instead of third and seven, Bruins now faced with a third and two situation. Cougars have only allowed three first downs in 27 third down opportunities, allowing just 11%.
very key drive for UCLA because they need to stop the run. They have, they have to prove that they can stop it or else they're going to have to worry about getting back in control of the ball game. Gain is three. It's second down and seven. The 26-yard line with 3.23 left here in the first period. Trip wide outs to the top. Carpenter, Albert Kennedy, and Jay Dumas is in the slot. Swings into the near side. That's Madhu. He's out across the 30 to the 31 where he's hit by Sheen Jasper. Another big week of college football around the Pac-10, Arizona, all over Stanford and Palo Alto, 34 to 10. Arizona State losing in the fourth quarter to California. The Sun Devils led the entire ball game at Berkeley, and that game is over. And here's the surprise: the Huskies of Washington, up in six-ranked Miami, 31 to 20. That game late in the fourth quarter in Oregon, all over Iowa, 40 to 18 at Watson Stadium in the fourth period. Three-step drop up and over the top. Six 
yards. Well, he had a beautiful 53-yarder versus Tennessee earlier this year. That was pushed out of bounds at the one-yard line. He's looking for the coffin corner again. This time it's going to be down at the two-yard line. A 40-yard punt, and Shager has again pinned an opponent deep. 44 seconds to play here in the first quarter. UCLA trailing Washington State 6 to nothing. Well, if you like this one so far, stay with us next weekend. The Pac-10 Game of the Week will come to you from across town here at the Coliseum as Rob Johnson in Southern California take on Danny O'Neill and the Oregon Ducks. Big win by Oregon today. That's next Saturday, 6.30 Eastern Time. The Trojans and the Ducks of Oregon, the Pac-10 Game of the Week right here on Prime. Derek Sparks and Kevin Hicks are the setbacks behind Chad Davis. Straight ahead it goes to Sparks. And did George Case get his wingspan around Sparks? <laughs> he certainly did. Old cycle. That's what they call him there. Case is a wild man on that UCLA defense, and he got in there and made a heck of a play. And Brady Stretch, number 77, was there to help him out. You know, Phil, one of the things about Washington State's offense, when you run a wide set, you got the trips and three wide receivers, you don't really practice that much on short yardage situations. You don't have that power blocking, so they're in a little bit of trouble down here backed up. Again, it's Sparks and Hicks. It's Hicks. Tries to turn the corner, moves it out to the five-yard line. He is hit in, hit hard by Abdul McCullough. Abdul McCullough would love so much to be the next great safety to come out of UCLA. Guys like Kenny Easley, Don Rogers, James Washington, Othello Henderson. That's the end of the first period. We're coming back for the Rose Bowl with the second quarter in a moment. We get set to start the second quarter with Washington State leading UCLA at the Rose Bowl 6 to nothing. Third and seven Cougars. UCLA defense today. And Saye Isaiah led the charge. George Case also in the middle. You can really credit that one to the secondary of UCLA. Great coverage back there, which allowed the defensive line to put some pressure on Davis. And Davis got a little bit nervous there and didn't throw the ball away. Instead, he started looking for a place to settle down. George Martin's going to punt it away. This will almost certainly give UCLA excellent field position to begin the second period. Here come the Bruins, and they almost got to it. Adams is chased back. He'll field it at the 49. Crosses the midfield strike and is chased out on the near sideline at the 43. A 48-yard punt. First quarter notes are brought to you by Great Western. Now you look at Hicks, a three-yard touchdown run, capped an 85-yard Washington State drive. Stokes did not start the ball game. He's playing, if you want to call it that. Thus far, the comparison of quarterbacks, Cook two of six, Davis four of five. First down Bruins at the Cougar 42-yard line. Sharmont Shaw and James Milner are the setbacks. Now they shift into the eye. It's Shaw at the extreme left of your screen. Play action, Cook. Hit from behind by Dwayne Patterson. Good pressure by Washington State. UCLA trying to throw on first down to sort of get something going there. Take an end zone look. You'll see the pressure will come from this angle here, and that will be 86. Patterson, he's going to come from that angle, just manhandles his guy at the top of the screen on the left side there, and Cook is looking down the field, and look at the way Patterson comes in. He's looking to force a turnover, trying to knock the ball out. Second down and 15, Cook sprint out left. Looking deep, and throws it out of bounds. Fields, what a pressure on Cook. Oh, more than pressure, Phil. He delivered one heck of a blow on Cook. Cook had just set himself and turned around and was looking downfield through the ball. Watch 29. He'll come up in the middle of the screen and he'll just blast Cook right there. And believe me, that hurts. Cook now two of seven, making two of eight for 31 yards. Mark Fields playing in the spot that Anthony McClanahan held down for so many years at Washington State. Third and 15, Washington and Chicago. 
Shaw again to setbacks from the gun. Looking for first down, Jordan. Does he have it? No. The officials say he was out of bounds. He had the first down. Torrey Hunter, great coverage. But Jordan just ran out of grass. Well, he dragged that foot, although he dragged it right on the sideline. You'll see Jordan in isolation here at number four. To run the shake route, fake inside, head back outside. Watch him drag the left foot. Doesn't quite get it down. You see the mark there, the chalk mark will come up. Just outside. Aaron Shager to punt it away. Torrey Hunter standing back at the 10-yard line. Again, almost blocked. Go away, we're coming back to Pasadena in a moment. 13-11 to play in the second quarter. Washington State with a touchdown midway through the first period out in front of the Bruins, 6-0. And for the second consecutive possession, the Cougar offense is pinned deep. They'll start this drive at the six-yard line. It's important for Chad Davis to protect the ball. No turnovers down here for Washington State.
Shahid Evans. He's the slot back. He's a junior college transfer from Contra Costa Junior College, originally out of Vallejo, California. And he has great speed. He's a track man, pretty good football player, and he gets wide open here. But take a look at the shot that Davis takes right here. Oh, what a blow delivered by Travis Kersky. I'll tell you, you won't have a receiver any more wide open than that the entire year. Shahid Evans running free as he broke off a pattern to the sideline, and Davis just misfired. It's second and ten. Again, trips to the near side. Madhu empties the backfield. Davis, this time, will go right. It's caught. David Canuck, the sophomore tight end, has got it. David Canuck. David Canuff, number 98. He's a sophomore out of Huntington Beach. A flag is down at the 46-yard line. Good story on David Canuff, the tight end. He dyed his hair albino white during two-a-days, and he didn't want his picture taken for the media guide. So Rod Commons told me last night he made him go back into the files and use his picture from last year. Personal foul, offense. 15-yard penalty. It'll be first down, 10. Well, they'll add that on, but you know, to, to finish off your story, there has to be a rule. If you dye your hair albino white, you have got to take your picture. And you, you shouldn't do things like that if you're not willing to stand up there and say, okay, here I am, look at me, shoot the camera. Did you ever think about doing that when you were playing at Stanford? Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> it's a first down for Washington State at the 45-yard line. Cougars waiting six to nothing, but more importantly, I'll tell you, when it comes to time of possession, they've owned the football. No, the running game has been there for Washington State today. Three step drop to the near side is caught. That's Jay Dumas, and look at him fly to the UCLA 40-yard line. Abdul McCullough tackled him out of bounds. Well, you can see this Washington State offense just growing with confidence with each play. And Chad Davis is more confident. That was a very nicely thrown ball. He laid it out there for Dumas to just pick it out of the sky with his hands and turn up the field. And Mark Price has got to be very, very happy. Mike Price has got to be very happy about the way his young quarterback is performing now. Now the uh, spreading the wealth right there. Six completions. He's hit five different receivers. He hit nine different receivers a week ago. Make it two weeks ago against Fresno State. That's Derek Sparks. Six feet, 220 pounds. He's a junior. Come on, a double shoulder surgery during the offseason. Had surgery rod in the front part of his left shoulder, and then they went around and did the back part of the same shoulder. Second ball's a tough game, and you get injuries like that. You see his career numbers there, 3.7. He's doing a little better than that today. Washington State is running the ball at UCLA, much like Nebraska did last week. Chad Carpenter is at the top of your screen. Jay Dumas is in the slot to the right.
on UCLA side, if you fall behind this team, 13 to nothing, 12 to nothing, you've got to win the ball because that Washington State defense is very tough, and they will know that they can just go after Wayne Cook, and that's going to make it a long, tough day for UCLA if Washington State picks up another score on this drive. That's a good point, Rob.
from the gun. Bjorn Merton, sophomore All-American out of 
Centerville, Virginia, came off just a sterling freshman year. First UCLA freshman kicker to ever win All-American consensus honors. He was absolutely sensational a year ago, 5 of 8 this year. This one will be spotted from 36 yards out. Got plenty of distance, but he pulls it to the left. It's no good. So now Merton, 5 of 9, and with 4.40 to play in the second quarter, Washington State still holds a 6-0 lead. Initially, it looks like this thing is going to drift to the right and get in there, but you see it keeps coming on back to the left. He hooks it, it just doesn't quite get there. Just to the left. Well, stay with us at halftime as we present college football today's halftime report. Glenn Walker will bring you all the scores and highlights of today's action, including that heart-stopping game at Ann Arbor, Michigan. Don't miss the highlights of that one. Glenn Walker will have it for you at halftime. Four minutes and 40 seconds away. Draw straight ahead and goes. That's Derek Sparks. And look at him move the ball out across the 23. Sheen Jasper led the UCLA defensive charge, but he needed help. Washington State is being very physical. They're playing a good old-fashioned kind of football game. Defense is really hitting and moving around, and the offense is grinding it out. Their backs are running real hard up the middle. Offensive line is doing a real fine job of blocking. To the right goes Chad Carpenter. Albert Kennedy is wide to the left. Kennedy's got it at the 30-yard line. Andy Colbert covered him. Albert Kennedy had a good freshman year, and he had some great guys to learn from. Guys like Darren Porter, Pointer Barton, C.J. Davis, Philip Bobo. There were some good ones for Mike Price's Cougars. Well, they're hoping that Kennedy learned enough to step up and become the big play guy that they need to take some pressure off of Davis in the running game. Chad Davis over center. He's got trip wide out to the top. Comes back to the near side, throws it out of bounds. Well, he had put a board hanging on it. He looked like a Christmas ornament. <laughs> well, he got rid of that ball. He threw it in the direction of a receiver, but clearly he was trying to get rid of it. Here you see 97 Ward coming from the outside untouched. There was a, an audible call by Davis, and nobody was there to pick up Ward. Davis barely got the ball away. Now UCLA being shut out here in the second quarter. There's Philip Ward's numbers. He's a sophomore out of Compton, California. And again, the Cougars showing triple wide receivers at the top of your screen. The give is straight ahead. It's Frank Madu, the junior from San Francisco. Boy, did he smack helmet to helmet with Donnie Edwards. Well, Edwards is being moved around on the defense to try to make a play. He's been coming from the outside. No that time they moved him inside and sent him on a blitz. You'll see in the middle of the screen, 23. He just beats the blocker, gets in the hole, and wraps up Madu very nicely there. Now Edwards in this opener. Four and a half sacks. Like 
everything in life, it's always what have you done for me lately. And Bjorn Merton was fabulous last year, 21 for 26 on the year. And you've talked about his All-American season. But this year, working with a new snapper and a new holder, he's really struggling, only five of nine on the year. Terry Donahue said there are two things that are really hurting our offense this year. One, we're having to deal with a long field because we only have three takeaways, as opposed to 11 through the first three games of the season. And also our All-American kicker is just not getting it done, not making the kicks he did for us last year, not giving us the spark and momentum. And with J.J. Stokes on the sidelines, all the more complicated. Back to you. Bruins shifting into the eye formation. The deep back is Shaw. He's got the football on the draw. He's not going anywhere. Chad Eaton, the senior tackle out of Puyallup, Washington. Good story on Chad Eaton, Rod. He's got his own radio show in Seattle on KJR Radio. He's real brash. He's very cocky. Got himself into a few problems on the radio with that brashness. Yeah, well, remember last year he went up to uh, Damon Hewitt, who's the quarterback of Washington, went yep. to his parents' house before the Apple Cup, tried to intimidate the quarterback's parents. <laughs> Second down and 12, again from the shotgun. There's a little inside handoff. And there's not much there. Ron Childs. Boy, does he grab hold of Sherman Shaw and stand him up. Well, there's some booing going on right now because UCLA has returned to the ground after having so much success throwing the ball earlier on. You see the rushing totals there for Fresno State against UCLA and Illinois. Nothing doing, and UCLA having a lot of trouble today, too. 15 yards rushing by the Bruins today. Wayne Cook, he's going down, and Mark Fields delivered the blow. delivered a blow. Wayne Cook is slow getting up and Fields came like a missile from the middle of the field all the way over to get Cook. You'll see 29 will show up from the right side of your screen. There he comes. He can't be blocked. He's relentless and he slams Cook into the turf. Look at 29. Full speed ahead. He just runs past the blocker. When you have great speed, you don't worry about people blocking you because you can run past them. Well, the Cougars have called a timeout with 1.18 to play. Boy, a very confident Washington State Cougar team here in the first half. I'd go so far as to say that they border on being cocky right now. I mean, they know that they can whip UCLA offensively right now. It's like a basketball team that is running free and slam dunking. They get the confidence going, and that's what Washington State has right now. A minute, 20 seconds to play in the first half. Next Saturday, Prime College Football brings you the number one team in the nation. The Gators try to continue their undefeated season with the victory over the Rebels of Mississippi. That's next Saturday, 12.30 Eastern on most Prime affiliates, Florida and Ole Miss. Can anybody hold Florida to 170 points? <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. Cowboys? I think there were 65 Division I basketball teams that did not average 70 points. <laughs> I think uh, the Dallas Cowboys will give them a pretty good game. Darren Shager, look at that per average today. Over 43 yards. Jay Duma standing back at the 28. Cougars look like they're going to rush everybody. They've got 10 men on the defensive front, and here they go. It's blocked. Henderson. And it'll be covered at the one-yard line, where the Cougars will take the football. Terrell Henderson came so close to Shaker's second punt today. Missed it by an eyelash. Didn't miss it this time. Well, you've been calling it all day long. They've been getting close. They've got it that time. And Mike Price told us yesterday that his players come off the field and they talk to him. They tell him when they can do something. And you can be certain that they went back and said, we can make this play. Henderson said, I can get there. Watch him make this great block. Gets his hands out there all over the ball. UCLA is in tremendous trouble right now, and Washington State is on the verge of going up by 13 or 14 points, Phil. Sparks and Hicks are the setbacks from the one-yard line. It's Hicks, and he will high-step it in. Now running Teddy Lawrence to the corner, and with just over a minute to play, Washington State has scored their second touchdown. They're going to go for two. Yeah, they should. They should go for two here. Well, you know, we were at the hotel yesterday with the Washington State players, and some of them were talking the talk. Well, right now, Hicks is walking the walk. He gets into the end zone here, high steps at the end. Teddy Lawrence, number two, doesn't have a chance to make the play. 12-0 Washington State, and they're going for two right now. Now, 
final round of your the offensive coordinator, John McDonald of Washington State. What are you calling right now on this two-point conversion? Well, I like my quarterback right now. He is so mobile and feeling so good. I'd roll him out a little bit Jeff and Davis. give him some options. If he can't find anything, let him run it in. Tight end now lines up to the right side. The set back is Sparks. In motion, Dumas. Oh, grab the option. Dumas in motion looked like an option, and you called it, Rod. Well, this guy's confidence, number 12, Chad Davis, is soaring right now. He's led this team beautifully in the first half. He's the guy you want to have handling the ball down here. He's making good decisions today, and that time takes it into the end zone for a two-point conversion, 14 to nothing, Washington State. This is clearly the best Chad Davis has played this season. Watching him on tape, I think Mike Price and everyone else had some concerns about just how many points Washington State could score. But the running game has come around today, and Davis has been better, pin perfect, really, throwing the ball, and has made good decisions as to when to run the football and scramble. And on the other side, Terry Donahue, certainly not caring at all. For what he is seeing thus far, there's Bob Toledo on the right, his offensive coordinator. Yeah, you get the feeling that uh, through the remainder of this first half, and certainly in the second half, Rod, that uh, UCLA has got to get those slants and screens that Bob Toledo talked to us about yesterday were working. They have to get some continuity. They don't have it right now. That's Ayers. Bumbles the football, now moves it out across the 20, and is really pounded out of the 22. The flag's down back at the 14. Robert Booth with a devastating hit on Derek Ayers. Flag back down at the 14-yard line. And we got a hold. Got him for a blocking in the back on the return. That was a heck of a hit by Booth. Oh. Thank you, Mike. 
not understand a lot of whooping it up here over on the Washington State, State sideline. And the Blues posse has been everything that they were advertised to be. If they can get through this next 49 seconds, that's 12 straight quarters without a touchdown scored against them. Second best in history at Washington State. Team in 1941 went 16 straight quarters. Back to you. Washington and Shaw are the setbacks. Cook changing the play. The audible at the nine-yard line. That's Hicks. Correction. That is Sherman Shaw as he moves the ball out to the 24. And on that run, Sherman Shaw becomes the first opposing running back to go over 25 yards in a game this year against this great defense. Amazing. You were thinking about Skip Hicks is out for maybe a season for UCLA. They'd like to redshirt him with his knee injury he's trying to recover from. And so Sharman Shaw steps in to do a great job so far this year for UCLA.
the replay. An unbelievable catch by Michael Westbrook on the deflection. What an ending. Shades of Doug Flutie to Gerald Phelan. Colorado wins a thriller 27 to 26 at Michigan Stadium. Unbelievable finish, and I would have to say that Cordell Stewart is now the leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy after what he did last week against Wisconsin. Number five, Penn State hosting Rutgers. In Happy Valley, the Lions beaten up on the Scarlet Knights. First quarter, Heisman candidate Kajana Carter. 22 yards for the score. It was 13-0, Nittany Lions. Second half, Penn State puts it away. Kerry Collins back to pass. Freddie Scott makes the catch. Are they going to catch him? He's to the 30. They might have the angle. No, sir. He goes 82 yards for six. Penn State routes Rutgers. 55 to 27 was the final score. Penn State is averaging 52 and a half points in their four victories this season. Number two, Nebraska rolls over the Tigers of Pacific. The final score 70 to 21. Brooke Barringer, three touchdown passes, one touchdown run. Tommy Frazier only played the first two series. They scored two touchdowns, and then he was out of the ball game. Florida State of North Carolina in the first quarter. It is now tied at seven. Florida State scored on their opening drive, but Leon Johnson has scored from a yard out for North Carolina, and this one is all tied up. Purdue taking on Notre Dame, a very wet South Bend, Indiana. Second quarter action, Ron Paulus looking for someone to throw to. Charles Stafford with the tough catch. Iris with a 10-0 lead. Second half. Ray Zellers takes the handoff. What an effort. Bulls over Reggie Johnson. Does a little hurdle action. And he goes 62 yards for the touchdown. The Irish beat up on Purdue. Had problems turning over the wet football. The final score was 39-21. Kinder, 143 yards rushing. Zellers ended the day with 156. I guess they didn't miss Lee Becton. After break, we'll head south with the Tennessee Volunteers. Bad luck continues. Stay with us. Back on the halftime report of the once promising season for the Tennessee Volunteers is just about over with. Last week's 31-0 loss to top ranked Florida has been followed by an upset loss at Mississippi State, and the Vols also lost another starting quarterback. This week it is Todd Helton. Of course, they lost Jerry Colquitt on their very first series of the season against UCLA. So enter Peyton Manning, son of Archie. He hits Kendrick Jones, and look at the two defenders take themselves out of the play. 76 yards for the touchdown. The Vols led this one 7-0. It was 21-17 Tennessee with under a minute to play. Fourth and goal from the two. Derek Tate will find his tight end, Kendall Watkins, for the touchdown, and Mississippi State pulls the upset, making Jackie Sherrill very happy. They win it by a final score of 24-21. Michael Davis rushed for 120 yards. And a touchdown, Peyton Manning, two touchdown passes in a losing cause. Auburn extends that long winning streak to 15 now, 38-0 over East Tennessee State. Alabama had all they could handle against the green wave of Tulane, but they win it by a score of 20-10. Sherman Williams, a career-high 191 yards rushing, and number 12, Texas A&M over Southern Miss in the fourth quarter. The score is 41-10. Indiana taking on Wisconsin in the Big Ten. Daryl Bevel and the Badgers out to defend their Big Ten title. They got blown out last week in Colorado, and Bevel had the hot hand first quarter. He goes to Tony Simmons, 38 yards for the touchdown. Bevel a perfect 13 for 13 in the first half. Badgers also good on the ground. Terrell Fletcher goes 54 yards on this play. He's going to get in there. He and Brent Moss both went over 100 yards, and Wisconsin rolls to a 62 to 13 victory. They scored touchdowns on their first six possessions of the afternoon. Ohio State all over the Houston Cougars. The final there, 52 to nothing. Houston shut out for the second straight game. North Carolina State taking on Western Carolina. They lead it in the second quarter, 21 zip. Maryland wins it in the ACC over Wake Forest. The final there, 31 to seven. Georgia Tech falls to the Duke Blue Devils, 27 to 12. Robert Baldwin, 41 carries, 162 yards, and three touchdowns. Georgia by a field goal over Ole Miss down in the Southeastern Conference. Eric Zier, a couple of touchdown passes. Kentucky taking on South Carolina, and the Gamecocks lead this one 10 to nine in the second quarter. Michigan State, they just barely lost to Notre Dame last week. They come back to beat Miami of Ohio, 45 to 10. Kansas, 72. Alabama, Birmingham, zilch. Oklahoma State taking on Tulsa, and it is tied at seven in the second quarter. Rice over Iowa State, 28 to 18 the final there. Rice, 372 yards on the ground, 423 total offense for them. Texas Tech, the Red Raiders, 35 to seven over Southern Methodist. Texas Tech has won the last six meetings in that series. Boston College, their first win of the season over Pittsburgh. They take it by a score of 21 to nine. Temple, edges by Army by a field goal, 23 to 20 was the final there. And Syracuse over East Carolina, the final score 21 to 18. After another timeout, more scores when the halftime report continues.
about the great quarterbacks in the conference, you look at Cook's numbers, and he's typically mentioned with the great quarterbacks, a notch below, they say. You see, he's not having his usual stellar day so far. Second and seven. Again, Jordan goes to the top of your screen. Wide to the right at the bottom is Mike Wynn.
Stop will step away. Early here in the third quarter, Washington State. 14, UCLA nothing.
wide receiver out at about the 30-yard line. Great coverage by Andy Colbert, the sophomore right corner out of Muir High School right here in Pasadena. His mother is an, a librarian. I'm sorry, UCLA grad. He plays his call Greenwood over there. His mom is very pleased that he went to UCLA. He'd been considering USC and some other places. Here's George Martin. He is on to punt it away. This will be his seventh punt of the afternoon.
caught three straight passes that time, fueling the, the sense that they really couldn't run the ball. I think they really need to try and do something to slow down this rush, even though they're down 21 to nothing. Look at all the Washington State guys, five of them, six of them teeing off on Wayne Cook, and you cannot throw the ball when you have six guys relentlessly coming after you. What an afternoon for that man, Don Sasa, the nose tackle for Washington State. Shager to punt it away. This time, plenty of time. Not particularly long. Jay Dumas, a fair catch call for at the 42-yard line. And that's where Washington State will bring the offense on with 4.26 remaining in the third quarter. A 33-yard punt. Well, that man, Terry Donahue, doesn't get a lot of credit for what he's done over the years here at UCLA. You know, you tend to forget that when he started here, he was a running game coach. They ran the beer back when they had Wendell Tyler, Theodis Brown, James Owens, and then he changed himself. He became a passing coach and has attracted great quarterbacks and great receivers, and they're going to need a great performance by their quarterbacks and receivers in the second, in this, uh, third and fourth quarter. First down, Washington State at the 42. To the near side, it comes. That's Daring Sparks. He's dropped by Shane Jasper. Now scores around the Pac-10 Conference today. Arizona went to Palo Alto and uh, dealt out the Stanford Cardinal 34-10. California came from behind to beat the Sun Devils 25-21. And Washington with a huge victory over Miami, knocking uh, Miami's 58-game winning streak short. And Iowa dropping it to Oregon. Oregon big in that game, and Baylor and USC go a little bit later tonight. And you pointed out an amazing number of the Hurricanes of Miami. 58 consecutive wins at the Rose Bowl, and the Huskies end it today. That would be the Orange Bowl. At the Orange Bowl. Thank you. Second down and six from the 46. Straight ahead, there goes Sparks. And it takes Shane Jasper and company to bring him down. Well, you talked in the second quarter, Rod, about Derek Sparks, number five, the junior right halfback for Washington State, and how he just loves to pound it up inside. We're seeing a good example of what he does when he gets the football inside the day, running between the tackles. Well, he's going to get a chance to do that for the rest of the ball game because Washington State wants to shorten this ball game now, leave the clock, and this is also a good test for Washington State's offensive line. It's a young line, four new starters, but they're playing very well today. Davis, uh, either a, a quarterback keeper or a mishandled snap, I'm not certain, on third down and three. And they're going to call a timeout and measure it as the ball is moved to the 48-yard. I think he got the first down. This is a planned play. You see that Chad Davis looked up and saw there was no one over the center, McCloskey, and he just got right behind him and tried to pick up the first down. Didn't get much closer than that. It's a first down for Washington State. And warming up there is UCLA's backup quarterback, Ryan Bean, the sophomore from Simi Valley, California. Keep in mind that Wayne Cook really got knocked around a lot in the first half, and he may uh, be a little bit groggy and just not as effective. We saw him really miss Derek Ayers very poorly on a pass the last series. Sparks once more, this time inside the 45 near the 44. George Case and Saleh Asaya. Now we go back to a year ago. Last year, going into their fourth game, the Bruins' defense had forced 11 turnovers, Rod. This year, they've got only three, and they have yet to force one this afternoon. Well, it's a difference in so many ball games. The more opportunities you have to score, the more likely you are to score. And UCLA has had fewer opportunities in short field positions this year. Washington State, on the other hand, is doing exactly that with their great defense, creating short fields. Wide to the right is Chad Carpenter in the slot to the right. Kearney Adams, he had the 42-yard catch in the first quarter. Straight ahead it goes again to Derek Sparks. Now Washington State wants to simply chew the clock up. Other scores around college football today. Nebraska, a 50-point favorite. 70 to 21. Florida State in the second quarter, leading 13th ranked North Carolina, 14 to 7. Colorado. Knocking off Michigan with the Hail Mary at the end there, 27-26. Penn State, and they're looking like one of the top teams in the country, maybe the top team, 55-27 over Rutgers. Are they going to play a game out of Happy Valley this year? <laughs> they like the home cooking. Third down and six, the ball at the 44. Davis looking left, going left, intended for David Spencer, he over 
UCLA, and Wayne Cook is coming back on. 21-0, Cougars over UCLA with 14.47 to play in the game. Avery Anderson. He's a junior wide out from Riverside, California. He's in the ball game wide to the right. In the slot is Ayers. From the shotgun come the Bruins. Instead of first and ten now at the 42, it's got to be first and 15 from the 47. But that's real odd, you know. You get a change of possession, and you're coming from the sideline onto the field. You really shouldn't get a delay of game penalty in that situation. I'm sure Terry Donahue is very frustrated by that. Avery Anderson again wide right. Ayers again in the slot. Now Charmont Shaw shifts over. Same play. Double wide outs to the bottom as well. Sets up, it's caught by Jordan, and oh, is he racked up at the 45 by Chris Hayes. The third quarter notes are brought to you by Great Western. Now Frank Badu, a 17-yard touchdown run after Chris Hayes' 67-yard interception return in the third quarter. Picks a couple of touchdown runs in the period. Wayne Cook sacked six times in the game. And the word in the third quarter was, J.J. Stokes will not return today. Now he was certainly a question mark at the top of our telecast, how much he would play and how effective he would be. It's second and 13. Cook fumbles the football, and it's recovered by Washington State. Dwayne Patterson having a repeat day for this Cougar defense that he had a year ago against UCLA. Well, you can talk about the Arizona Wildcats and their great defense, but this team from Washington State plays great defense also. And Patterson, number 86, is a big-time player. You see Cook stepping up here. Patterson is so quick. He beats his man back to the inside and is always thinking turnover. He gets in and knocks the ball loose, and Washington State recovers. Look at him come back in. Look at the hand looking for the throwing arm of the quarterback, and he knocks the ball loose. Now Dwayne Sanders caused the fumble. Patterson recovered it. Kevin Hicks into the ball game. He's got it, moves it out across the 47 where he's hit and dropped by Grady Stretz.
provided by the backup tight end, David Kanaf. Well, UCLA rolled the dice a little bit and came with the blitz. And Davis picked it up, and nobody covered 34 of Madhu. You see Madhu, top of the screen, 34 flare out, and nobody picks him up. And Davis hangs in there to take the shot from 97 Ward. You'll see 97 Ward coming in. He takes on Davis, flush, drives him into the ground. But Davis gets the ball out to Madhu, who picks up a lot of yardage for Washington State. Those kind of hits hurt a lot more when those passes are incomplete, don't they? <laughs> They hurt just the same tomorrow morning, I guarantee you that. <laughs> First down, Washington State. They give us to Madhu, and he moves the pile inside the 39 to the 38. George Case, the nose guard, makes the stop. Just over 12 minutes to go here in the fourth quarter, Phil. If UCLA is going to have any chance of getting back in this ball game, the defense has got to force a turnover. But right now, Washington State looks very confident, very much in control, and they are protecting the ball. Double wide outs to the bottom. Evan Ford and Albert Kennedy. There's Madhu. He finds running room across the left side, and he's banged down at the 32 by Andy Colbert. Boy, Andy Colbert has been in on a number of stops this afternoon, Rod Gilmore, and he's just a sophomore from right here in Pasadena. Replace Carl Greenwood on that right corner. Greenwood with a broken leg out for the year. So Colbert really was expected to be their nickelback. See, only 165 pounds, 5'8", but he's a tough guy. Not, a, not afraid to stick his nose in there and make big tackles. It is such a young UCLA defense. Only two seniors starting today. Bubbles on the exchange and Chad Davis fell on it. A lot okay. running with 11.07 to play. Good presence by Davis not to try to pick up the ball and do anything with it. He knows that he needs to just protect the ball so he jumps right on it. And that way our Washington State keeps possession. Now George Martin's going to punt it away. Mike Bryce and company want to pin the Bruins as deep as possible. Paul Guidry is walking backwards for UCLA. He's the single safety back at the 11-yard line. Martin thus far today is long of 48, averaging just about 37 yards a punt. UCLA looks like they're coming to block it. They're going to take a intentional delay again to back the ball up another five yards to give their punter George Martin just that much more room. Now we talked at the outset of our telecast, Rod, about this very stingy Washington State defense, and they are certainly every bit as touted. Well, I don't think anyone expected them to come in and totally shut down the UCLA. Again. Offense, five yards, still fourth down. UCLA really hasn't been able to mount any kind of a drive this afternoon against Washington State's outstanding defense. And Terry Donahue, I'm sure, is really frustrated at that. Only 130 yards in total offense for UCLA. Only 40 on the ground. Martin, he unloads it on, oh, is this a beauty? Into the end zone it goes, about nine yards deep. A 40-yard punt for UCLA, and they'll have it on their own 20-yard line after the touchback with 10-17 to play on the ball game. It's the Cougars 21, UCLA nothing. College football is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Flying the low-fare airline is just plain smart. And by cold, clean, original Coors, because you feel like it. 17 to play in the ball game. Washington State leading it 21 to nothing. And UCLA has elected to make a change at quarterback. Ryan Bean has gone in now for the first time today in place of Wayne Cook. Cook, seven sacks on the afternoon. You look at Bean's numbers. His career at UCLA, 15 of 35. UCLA on the afternoon is now rushed for a tidy sum of 43 yards. Yeah, and it's not just because you know, they fell behind in the ball game and had to throw the ball. They were in the ball game and they were trying to run, but Washington State just would not let UCLA outside, and they wouldn't let it run up the middle. That was only the 
second carry by a UCLA running back other than Sharmon Shaw. Milner now, two carries for five yards. Here in Washington has one carry for three. Sharmon Shaw, 14 carries for 62. Kevin Hicks. Let that offensive line go to work and try and milk this clock. 
with 7.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Second down and 13. There's Quirks. And there's nothing there. Now Washington State, a week from today, they will travel to Knoxville to take on the Volunteers of Tennessee. UCLA calls a timeout. UCLA knocked off Tennessee here in the Rose Bowl in UCLA's season opener. A timeout on the field with 7.28 to play. We're coming back to the Rose Bowl in a moment. its unique characteristics, but here at the Rose Bowl, framed by the beautiful San Gabriel Mountains, I don't think there's any more beautiful setting at all of college football. Chad Davis, he wants the first down and more, and it's incomplete, intended for Albert Kennedy. And again, Andy Colbert is right there, the help from Javelin Guidry. There is Colbert. You'll see Colbert comes over, a little bit of contact there, right as the ball arrives. Makes a nice play. I know Phil Stone would believe that that would be pass interference, but you got to have a little bit of contact. I'm trying to find the yellow handkerchief. Fourth <laughs> <laughs> down at 13. Martin to punt it away, and it's Gidry deep. Calling for the fair catch at the 24. He's got it. With 7.13 to play, let's go down to Paul. All right, thank you very much. A very special guest. If you follow Pac-10 football, you know Anthony McClanahan, linebacker last year for Washington State. you got to be pretty happy with the way your team's playing here today, especially on the defensive side. Well, we do it right now. You know, uh, these guys are playing phenomenal ball. Uh, you know, the offense is coming around. The defense is just playing like up to par like always. Uh, you've got a new defensive coordinator, my linebacker coach. You know, there's the corner zone with uh, plays or whatnot, and, and everybody seems to be fired up, and as you can see, by the score. Everybody talks about Desert Swarm. Who's better this year, Arizona's defense or Washington State? I mean, you know who that is. <laughs> the Cougars, are, like I said, you know, last year, the year before that, especially this year, just playing, just doing their thing like always. All right, you, you were with Dallas for a little while, and now you're headed where to continue your football career? Well, uh, Calgary drafted me, and they have my rights. You know, I'm never going to throw out the NFL, but I think uh, next week I will be in Calgary. I just got word that... Uh, you know, that they, they want me and they have they have my rights and whatnot. So I'm not done playing ball. I'll be in Calgary. All right, I look forward to seeing you out there again. Great career in the Pac-10. Back up to you. All right, Paul. Here comes number 30, Dalen Washington. And there's not much running room. He needed to get to the 36 and a half. He moved it out to the 37. It's a UCLA first down. I'll tell you, rushing yardage has come very, very difficult today. UCLA, 47 yards on the ground on 27 carries. Can't do it much better than that. Bean looking near side now takes it downfield. Almost intercepted. Mike Wynn tipped it. Chris Hayes had a chance at it. Couldn't hold it. Yeah, Chris Hayes tipped it first. Chris Hayes had a chance to pick that ball off and start running towards the end zone and do a little bit of high stepping of his own. But he lets his ball get away from him. Take a look at this. Right here, Chris Hayes is right there, jumped a little bit too soon and allows Wynn a shot at the ball. He won't like the film session tomorrow when the coaches show that one. Yeah, but you know what Hayes is going to tell the coaches? Coach, scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, coach said, you, good point. <laughs> Suck it down in 10. Now the ball at the 39. From the gun, Ryan Bean at quarterback. Here comes the pressure again. Unloads, and it is caught at the 48-yard line of Washington State. Mike Wynn caught it. I don't know how because the free safety Todd Jensen can't cover a receiver any better. Yeah, and I don't know how Ryan Fine got this ball to him under all that pressure. Look at this throw. And look how Wynn goes down low to create a basket for it. And what a great, great defensive effort to knock the ball out. And look how Fine stands in there to this pressure. Washington State says, Fine, if you're going to throw the ball, we're going to keep bringing the pressure. And Chad Eaton is the guy that's bringing the lunchbox. Over the middle it goes, incomplete intended. I believe it was intended for, for McCl uh, McElroy. It was Chris Hayes again pressuring Ryan Fiend. 
And other scores around the nation, Notre Dame all over Purdue, 39-21 in the rain at South Bend. Number 10, Auburn, no trouble at all with East Tennessee State. And Alabama, number 11, a little trouble with the green wave, but finally knocks them out, 20-10. Texas A&M, 41, Southern Mississippi, 17. And Texas, 21 nothing in the second quarter over TCU. On second and ten, pass intended for Kevin Jordan. James Darling was, uh, I'll tell you, he was cheek to cheek with Jordan. And Chris Hayes had another shot at an interception. Jordan was hit. It's a Paul went past him, and Hayes had it right in his sights again. Couldn't come up with it. Now Terry Donahue looking right now at perhaps the second shutout of his Bruins in the last two years. Well, Donahue wasn't certain how his team would react after the beating they got from Nebraska last week, and I'm certain he would say not very well, considering the offensive ineptitude tonight. Being under pressure, it's Darren Washington. He had it, couldn't hold it, UCLA. Now in third down opportunities, 1 of 14 on the day. I can't recall the last time a UCLA offense has had such trouble moving the ball oh, and scoring. Now Terry told us yesterday in his office, Rod, that uh, that he felt this Washington State defense was really going to be a load. And he said, hey, they're better than Nebraska. We know that already, and they're showing it today. Some people may say, well, come on, Nebraska, that's the number one team. But this Washington State defense is right there with the Arizona's, if not better. From the shotgun on fourth down and ten. B needs ten, and they get pass interference out there. Nope. Intended for Mike Wynn. Ron Childs tipped it. And that takes off any flag that, uh, that might have been thrown once the ball's tipped. So Washington State will take the football with 5.43 to play at their own 47-yard line. This is a huge win for Washington State. What a game today. But next weekend, Rod and I, along with Paul Sunderland, will come to you from the Coliseum here in Los Angeles. Danny O'Neill and his Oregon Ducks, big winners today, will take on Southern California and Rod Johnson. That's next Saturday, 6.30 Eastern time. The USC Trojans and the Ducks of Oregon. Our Pac-10 Game of the Week right here on Rod. As David Spence in motion to the top straight ahead, it goes to Frank Badu. And he moves into the midfield stripe and is dropped by London Woodfin. You know, Washington State also felt it was important for them to play well in Los Angeles because they do so much recruiting down here, Phil. And to come in to Pasadena and play this well really will help them in their recruiting during the offseason. That's a good point. Mike Price told us yesterday that he thought as many as 30 high school players that uh, UCLA and Washington State have an interest in might be in the Rose Bowl today watching this game. And I'll tell you, if you've got a youngster that's trying to decide between UCLA and Washington State, uh, what a job the Cougars have done today. That's Badu again. Abdul McCullough on the tackle. So we're coming home with a victory, baby. That's the Samoan himself, Don Sassa. He's a senior tackle from the area here, Long Beach, California. He's a volleyball player at Long Beach. They call him Pizza Man. Oh, I don't understand why. I wonder why. He can probably deliver 100 of them. <laughs> he gets all the pizza he wants. He's 281 pounds. And then you see J.J. Stokes, whose senior season so far has got to be sort of a nightmare for him. He hasn't played very much. He's been injured. His team isn't doing very well either. Madhu. Now Donnie Edwards almost got the handoff there from uh, Chad Davis. And we've got a timeout now called by UCLA on fourth down and nine. 4-14 to play on this ball game. Washington State manhandling the Bruins. UCLA came in a seven-point favorite to beat Washington State. It's the Cougars 21, the Bruins, the defending Pac-10 champions, nothing with 4.14 to play. George Martin is set to punt it away. Paul Guidry is standing back at the 14-yard line for UCLA. Good snap. Oh, does he boom it? 52 yards. Touchback. And the Bruins will put it in play at the 20-yard line. I'll tell you, when 
this defense beat Illinois at Soldier Field in their first game of the year, Lou Tepper of Illinois said, we saw an excellent defense. Well, you know, take a look at that. The last shutout that Washington State had was against Pacific in 1993. Oregon State was the last Pac-10 shutout they had back in 1985. And it's sort of ironic, you know, that Mike Price has had all these great offensive teams over the years and hasn't won a conference championship with that. But now he's got a great defense that has the ability to shut people out. Washington. Okay. Second down. 
and 10, the ball at the 49-yard line with 2.08 to play in the ball game.